Hello Tangerinis! Today we are finally telling you the story of our second trip ever to the emergency room in Mexico. First of all, thank you to everyone who's been following us on social media and sending us messages, comments, asking how he is. Thankfully, Jordan is doing a lot better and we're still on like a very restrictive diet to try to keep all the health issues in check. But essentially today we're going to be telling you what the experience was like going to what turned out to be a private hospital, seeing specialists, the costs involved, in all of this, how much English and Spanish there was, and everything in between. <laughs> all right, let's get into it. To sort of like lay the groundwork, Jordan was experiencing some symptoms leading up to this big episode that he had that actually took us to the hospital. We sort of both thought it was food related, like food allergies, because it was only when he ate certain foods, like wine would trigger this, avocado sometimes, and then his throat would feel like it was closing up a little bit, or scratchy, or difficulty breathing, things like that. So there was a little bit happening leading up to this and eventually we just reached a tipping point. I feel like I need to put a gigantic disclaimer. If you see this red rash on my chest, one, I'm not sunburned and two, well actually just one, I'm not sunburned. I don't know what this is. I get this sometimes from heat rash, like when it's hot. Uh, sometimes, right there. yeah, I just put sunscreen here so I'm possibly reacting to the sunscreen or my body just likes to have random reactions for no reason. So it could be that too. Okay, so now that Jordan is done picking up Laska's poop, um, how about you describe what happened the morning of that you were feeling and the symptoms, how they like started amping up kind of. So after having coffee that morning, we were meeting one of our patrons for breakfast. And once I got there, I was not feeling well at all. And I ended up going to the grocery store and buying an electrolyte water, hoping that it was electrolytes. I was making my head feel light and my arms tingle and my legs tingle, but that didn't help and it just got worse. So then I'm breathing. Oh yeah, and I was having difficulty breathing. I wouldn't have done this if I didn't absolutely think I had to. And I was like, I need to go to the hospital right now where they can take care of me. If anything happens, like if I pass out or something, because I felt like I was very close to doing that. We ran to the car and um, hurried to the emergency room, which was just a few minutes away. Flying over topes, throwing caution to the wind because uh, he, Jordan was truly scared, I was scared. And so we're on the way there. Neither of us know, are we going to have to do this in Spanish or English? Because our Spanish is coming along thanks to Rocket Languages, but uh, specific medical words, like that, it'll still be a while before we can fully master those. So then we got in there. I'm kind of freaking out at this point, and if you don't know a language very, very, very well, then you forget a lot I in mean, high stretch. Flustered. Yeah, it, it, this was stressful and scary. Yeah, in high stretch situations, you know like one tenth of what you actually know. <laughs> <laughs> but I was able to explain. I'm having trouble breathing. I don't know all these words that I need to say. Like I don't know the word for lightheadedness. I don't know the word for various organs. And I was wondering if there's a doctor who speaks English. And very quickly they hooked me up with a doctor, who, and she spoke English quite well, although she wouldn't admit it. <laughs> but before I went in with the doctor, they took my vitals right away, and I wasn't waiting more than a couple minutes to see the doctor. And she did. Uh, full exam after asking questions all about my medical history and things like that. The very first test she ran was to determine whether I might be diabetic or not. So she did a glucose test and also this same day she did two blood tests, a urine test. And the ultrasounds? Oh yeah, yeah. And then they took me in with a specialist to get an ultrasound and that took about a half hour. I had never had one of those done before. Basically they were looking at all of my internal organs to seeing if if they all looked okay, if they could see kidney stones, bladder stones, anything like that. We got the test results back very quickly. That was something I was quite impressed with in this whole visit, is not only the facilities were really looked like very modern and everything like that, but 
they do all the tests in-house and they get you with a specialist very quickly and all your blood tests and urine tests back within a couple hours which is unlike anything I've ever experienced in the US. Something else unique about this, they did take Jordan's vitals and we had the whole doctor's visit. They even did the glucose test without payment, but as soon as it was time for the other things like blood tests and the ultrasound and everything, then we had to go pay for those things before we had them all done. So that's a little bit different, I think, than in the US. Usually you're paying after the fact. In the US, they won't even tell you the price until afterwards. Yeah, we didn't know the price either, but all of this was like total like panic situation. We would have paid anything to make sure Jordan was okay. Something they told us though was that for residents versus tourists or travelers, there's a big price difference. So we were paying a significantly lower price because we have temporary residency. You might be able to get the local price if you're living within Mexico somewhere and you don't necessarily need temporary residency or permanent residency as far as we could understand. But if you know, feel free to let us know in the comments so other people can be more informed. But they were asking for like an electric bill or a lease or something. And so obviously with our temporary residency card, we just show them that and that was good to go. So we came back about an hour later for the test results, the blood test and the urine test and she was also going to go over the ultrasound test with me because she had been talking to the ultrasound specialist. I don't know what that doctor was called. This is actually the problem with not knowing the Spanish words for all of these. You would first have to know them in English. Therein lies the dilemma. <laughs> there were times where she didn't know the word in English and said it in Spanish and we were able to fill in the blanks. So that's really comforting to know that we do have those abilities. If you are wanting to learn Spanish with Rocket Languages, which is the program that we recommend above all others. They're actually having a sale right now, so we'll put the link for that. You can even do a free trial before you buy it. We'll put that down below in the description. Quick note, it is only for the first thousand people and for four days, so if you are thinking about doing it, I would jump on it right now because it's a very limited time sale and number sale. Limited time number sale. <laughs> <laughs> all the tests pretty much came back negative. There's a little... Within normal range. Yeah, yeah. You don't have anemia, the white cells are in normal levels. It has renal function. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the renal function, you are on range. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, it's working, the, the kidney is working. There was a little bit of something weird that they found with the ultrasound, but they said it was probably something I was born with and um, nothing that should affect me negatively. So then and comes the fun part. Oh yes, yes. Jordan, you're blushing. Why are you blushing? <laughs> <laughs> then he took his clothes off for another woman. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, Take your you're, off. you're getting a couple shots in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> say fun, you can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting a couple shots in the buttocks. <laughs> That's exactly how I said it. <laughs> One was a, a steroid to keep my uh, breatheway, what's that called? Airway? Is airway. <laughs> my, my airway open for 24 hours, making sure I wouldn't have difficulty breathing. And then another was one of the medications that they were going to subscribe to me, but they wanted that in my system immediately. Please don't die. I don't want to go to the hospital again. <laughs> <laughs> Been there too many times already. <laughs> After getting the test results back, the doctor's suspicions in the beginning that it was acid reflux related was kind of confirmed. You might think that acid reflux is nothing serious, but if I actually don't think that's the case, it can actually have a lot of bad side effects. In fact, if I remember right, acid reflux or what they call GERD, G-E-R-D, is one of the biggest killers in the U.S. behind like heart disease and cancer. So with it looking strongly like it's acid reflux, <laughs> uh, basically what we had to do is completely do like a hard turn and change diet up immediately. Remove coffee, mm -hmm. no more drinking margaritas, no spicy food, no processed food, no foods high in fat. No dairy. No dairy, yeah, things like that. Basically too. I couldn't eat any of the good stuff. <laughs> so we immediately just started making like fresh raw salads. There's something on me. <laughs> Whole foods, lots of produce, lots of greens, things like that to 
calm down the symptoms or to the, attempt yeah. to calm down the symptoms. They also asked you to sleep differently. Yeah, to sleep at an incline and favor my left side if I was going to sleep on my side. So in addition to the diet changes, they had us go pick up three different things from the pharmacy. I picked all those things up, started the diet changes immediately, and I was still struggling hardcore for several days to come. So once we got the verdict sort of thing, we just basically stayed at home so we could cook all of our own food and be in a stress-free environment and be close to the hospital in case Jordan needed to go back, which did end up happening a few days later. He felt like he couldn't breathe at all. And again, the same like tingly fingers and numbness, lightheadedness. So we hopped right back over there <laughs> to see what was going on. And the other thing that wanted me to, made me want to go back to the hospital immediately that second time was I was feeling like I was having a lot of trouble breathing and then I felt my heartbeat and it was super irregular. This second emergency room visit, this is on a Sunday now and it turns out going on a Sunday is more expensive than going on any other day probably because they're paying the employees more. So what did they do this time? It was a different doctor so I had to catch her up. Unfortunately she didn't speak as good of English as but the first doctor. she did speak English. Y yes, yes. She started off by saying I don't speak English very well and then proceeded to basically be fluent in English. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we went over history again, what we did the last time and the only test that was run the second time was an electrocardiogram or an EKG to look at my heartbeat and see what was going on with that. And it only took a couple minutes. With those results, she was able to confirm that there were some irregularities in my heartbeat, both in pace and speed. So then she's like, I think you should see a cardiologist immediately. They were able to set up an appointment for me just a few hours later, it was this cardiologist who was coming from Cozumel to Playa del Carmen, who I guess goes back and forth from those two places all the time. A few hours later, we were in Playa meeting with a cardiologist. Something quite different than the US was seeing these specialists so quickly. Um, like seeing a cardiologist the same day was just like, I mean, wild to me. Back in the US when I had to go to specialists and go to doctor's visits all the time, trying to figure out what was wrong with me, it could take three months to see a specialist. Like that would be their first availability. So this was really cool. We're in Playa del Carmen. The cardiologist shows up and he has the best English of any of them. So I was like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> he did his wizardry magic on me, ran some tests to determine whether there was something wrong with my heart. The appointment was maybe 30 or 45 minutes long. And by the end of it, he was convinced that there was absolutely nothing wrong with my heart. The lower speed at which my heart was beating was not abnormal for my age and physical activity level. And that the irregular heartbeat, like the irregular intervals, that was, I forget the name of it, but there was um, some condition that was very common, often was onset by caffeine. So it's something he'd seen all the time and didn't seem to be worried about it at all. Thankfully, that was basically it for the hospital and doctor's visit. I still wasn't feeling that well. My symptoms had improved a little bit at this point. Something that was super unique was we got the cell number of every doctor that we saw. I've never gotten the cell phone number. I haven't been able to text my doctor ever, ever in my life. That was pretty cool to be able to keep in touch with them. And like, for example, with my first doctor, I felt like I might be having some side effects from one of the medications. So I texted her wondering if it's okay to get off of that one. And she said, yes, that should be fine. And I don't all of the doctors were communicating with each other on your behalf. Oh yeah, yeah, that was something else that was super nice about it. If we got the same treatment in the US, we would probably be in medical debt for sure. Absolutely. Forever. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, but not funny. <laughs> okay, so now for the prices. Just keep in mind that these are the resident prices. So if you were not a resident, just a traveler or a tourist, it would be more expensive. We're not exactly sure how much more expensive. So the initial visit when we first went in for the to the ER was 250 pesos for the consult itself. The glucose test only cost 29 pesos. 
and the organ ultrasound was 1433 pesos. The urinalysis and blood tests, all of those that they did, so there were multiple of them, like a whole long list, that was 1698 pesos. And those super fun shots that they gave you? 57 pesos. <laughs> Three prescriptions that they prescribed, and then later the one prescription that the cardiologist prescribed were 828 pesos and 336 pesos. And the cardiologist visit, that was 800 pesos. For whatever reason, we had to pay cash for that one because he was coming into the office or he's like a guest at a that hospital. A contractor or something. Something like that. We were able to pay with a credit card for everything else though. Mm -hmm. So total we're looking at 6,402 pesos. Given all that went into this and how fast we got test results back and how modern the facilities were, all the doctors spoke English and everything involved and also that it's a private hospital, I'm, I'm surprised. Honestly, that it wasn't more. I, I yeah. thought it was going to be more. I would give this whole experience five stars. All of these doctors were super confident and these hospitals were clean, well-maintained, new equipment, just as good if not better than what you would find in the US. Hopefully we covered all the information that you guys were looking for out of this video. If not though, if you have any other questions, leave them down below as a comment. We're also going to link on the end screen to our previous visit that we had at an ER, also with Jordan because he seems to really like going to hospitals and that was at a public hospital that time totally different experience but anyway thank you guys for watching this video give it the old thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to our channel to see more videos of our life in puerto morelos mexico travels international travels that we have coming up and one last thing i have to loosen up okay that bell so you get notified when we put out new videos <laughs> and we will see you in the next one